Apple HQ is buzzing right now, and all because of one thing, their AR VR headset. We're pretty certain that the wait is very nearly over and it will finally come to market within the next few months. But as we get closer to getting our hands on a pair, the details that are leaking out are changing and developing virtually every week. In this video, we'll try to cover as many of those new details as possible, including the name of details about the lenses, the power supply and specifications. We'll even take a deep dive into some patents for the headset too. Plus, some leaks about the event where it may be launched. Me and Marcus, along with his team at Hyperware, they're the guys that created all the renders in this video. Well, we think we have an exclusive on the name. Contrary to popular rumors that have been doing the rounds, we're pretty confident they're gonna be called Apple Vision and not Apple Reality Pro, as this device is an evolution of the medium of television. The newly designed operating system that will work across all Apple devices in your ecosystem is going to be called Reality OS or possibly even XROS. We know that a shell company named New Zealand Intellectual Property Offices continues to file trademarks globally for XROS. This new OS is both exciting and crucial. It'll be this that will mesh together your Apple ecosystem. Imagine being able to look at the blood oxygen reading you've just taken on an Apple Watch, but being able to see your blood moving or your arteries pumping. This will be the new functionality for all your Apple products on top of what they can already do. So much manpower is being thrown at this project at Cupertino that the rest of the year could be pretty barren for other new revolutionary devices iOS development is behind schedule, and Apple just gave us a load of new Macs and even a new HomePod right at the start of the year. Apart from the new Mac Pro that I made a video about recently, and you can watch that right here, the only other for sure product this year will be iPhone 15. This is Apple's first new category since Apple Watch in 2015, and they know everyone will be watching, but equally, they know it won't be perfect on release. They'll make sure to market the heck out of this headset, pointing out that the first owners are trailblazers at the cutting edge. They'll stress to emphasize that the first iteration is a platform to test the very latest technology that this headset represents. And they'll be keen to get customers involved. Don't forget, this is a new caring, sharing, post butterfly keyboard app with the one that gave us back the SD card slot. So they're now all about listening these days. That will help them to justify the high price point while managing expectations about it being a fully formed product with a set market position. Guys, if you're enjoying this video and finding it useful, it would really help me out if you took time to subscribe to the channel. Subscriptions really do matter for a channel my size. Each one counts. I'm passionate about bringing you great videos just like this every week, but for that to happen, well, I need your help. Oh, and simply by giving the video a like, it helps me out a whole lot too. Video will get in front of more viewers. There's a free members newsletter you can join as well. Every Sunday, I send out a video just chit-chatting about stuff I can't really talk about here. So if that appeals, get involved. And there's even details about a Discord server so that we can build our own chat room and community too. Anyway, let's get back to the video. The device will have groundbreaking technology behind it. There'll be numerous external cameras, and these will analyze the user's hand movements with internal sensors reading your eyes. Via the simple twist of a digital crown, similar to the Watch Ultra or AirPod Max, where we'll be able to jump in and out of AR and VR. In the AR world, digital content will be laid over the top of the real world. In VR, you'll be immersed within the headset in an entirely digital world, and Apple will offer users with prescription glasses custom lenses that sit inside the headset itself. The device will also break with tradition and be a totally hands-free experience, so there'll be no handheld controller options, well, initially, anyway, but they'll be looking towards bringing out an input-output haptic experience on the OS as quickly as possible, I dare say. You'll be able to input text gestures with <laughs> Siri or even hook up on a physical keyboard if you really want to go to those lengths. The power will come from a waist-mounted battery pack that will attach to the headset via a MagSafe-type braided cable. The size and weight of the battery is expected to be around the size of two iPhone 14 Pro Maxes and should be good for over two hours of, of general use. The battery pack, which will be some kind of white plastic, will have an LED status indicator, just like an AirPods case. We can also imagine that similar to the bands on Apple Watch, Apple will develop a whole separate accessories range for the headset as well, including, say, belt clips and shoulder straps. As for the design, well, have you ever noticed the Apple products that are released that are worn next to the skin, like Apple Watch or AirPods? They're curved and rounded. Well, that's what we can expect from this headset as well. The front pass-through lenses, they'll be made from some kind of glass or plastic material with sensors hidden around the edges of the screens. The world-facing cameras will include LiDAR scanners and sky and floor-facing sensors as well. Odds are Apple is working on some kind of clever outward-facing cameras. You need cameras exactly where your eyes are for the best pass-through effect. A magnetic connector for the braided power cable will be attached to the head strap and will be engineered in such a way as to not interfere with any movements, even if you're lying down. 
It will come with some kind of self-tightening mechanism, but not much else is really known about the strap at this stage. There aren't many clues, not even from the patents. The most likely set of patent applications, though, tell us that it will be a half rigid, half elastic design, so it will feel more like glasses without cutouts where your ears go. There'll be some kind of audio built into the strap, but to get the full spatial audio experience, well, for that, we'll need a pair of AirPod Pro. The face gasket will be magnetically removable, just like AirPods Max, the cups on AirPods Max. The patents tell us that the gasket against your skin will match the contours of your face. It'll be equipped with a three-point sensor system to help read your face shape, create your digital avatar, and detect any big hand movements or gestures. The details from the patents are giving us some opposing details. Some saying the cushion will look similar to the ones found on AirPod Max, while other patents saying they'd be more like a, a mesh kind of material. For a few reasons, we believe the mesh material to end up being the more likely of the options. The mesh should be able to support and learn more face shapes, and it could include integrated technology better, such as face shape and movement sensors. But most importantly, it's better for airflow to the face, help introduce those annoying funny red marks you get and ease back on that icky kind of sweat you get around lens covers as well. What do you know about the back lenses and sensors? The interpulpary distance, or the IPD, is going to be self-adjusting. If you don't know what that is, it's, well, it's the distance between the center of the lenses and the eyes itself. That will adjust automatically on Apple Vision, possibly with some kind of motors. There'll be at least eight user-facing sensors. There'll be a secondary peripheral display within the lens or around the outside of it, and this will give a field of view of around about 120 degrees at least. These inside lenses will have a resolution of at least 4K per eye. Video calls is another area in which Apple hopes to steal a thunder from its main rivals. Whilst Meta creates cartoon-type avatars, Apple are looking to realistically render the wearer's entire face and body. Assuming both parties have an Apple Vision headset, then the meeting experience should feel like you're in a room together. Initially, this will only be available for one-to-one -one calls due to the crazy amount of processing power that's going to be required. Group calls will be an option, but only with a more Memoji-based character instead. Tim Cook at heart is an operations man, and he'll be aware of the importance of driving wearers to their services, in particular Apple TV. Apple TV, with Nerf technology, could prove to be a perfect partner for the headset. It's quite possible that Apple is working with partners such as Disney or NBA to bring a whole new experience. Imagine that sports venue or theatres that have the right camera infrastructure, their side. You can simply, by twisting the crown on the headset, you can be transported away from watching a ball game at home to being courtside at the Lakers or being involved in a Disney parade. We could be about to see some very exciting innovations in the way we consume TV and movies. Technically, both visually and the audio could soon be as good with Apple Vision as it would be if you went to an IMAX movie theatre. It really, it really could happen. The Apple Vision headset will also act as a monitor for your Mac. Whilst Apple perfects the technology to type mid-air, Apple Vision will use Siri to input text. <laughs> Good luck with that. This will be a standalone feature and unlike Apple Watch, won't rely on your iPhone. All this means you'll be able to use supported apps such as Photos, Safari, Calendar, Mail and Messages directly from within the new headset. Gaming will clearly be an important area for this new product and it will be powered by Apple's dedicated VR engine. The recently released M2 chip will be at the heart of the device, along with Reality Processor, a processor dedicated to driving the graphics and mixed reality experiences. As you can tell, there's a hell of a lot going on with this headset. All this heavy processor work creates heat, even, even using Apple Silicon. And the engineers were aware that all this heat close to the user's face could prove an issue, which neatly brings you back to our belief that the Apple Vision will go with a mesh design around your face to help reduce heat as best as possible. If or what active cooling they'll be, we're not sure about yet. When it comes to buying Apple Vision, Apple will be keen to get you in store. Similar to how Apple Watch was launched with a store within a store experience, that too is being planned for the headsets launch in Apple retail outlets. The device, which we made largely of glass, aluminium, and even carbon fiber, will hopefully be launched before summer at a price of at least $3,000. It looks very much as if no stone has been left unturned in the development of this product. They're hoping to ship around 1 million units in the first year, but even, even at the price point, they're prepared to take a big L on the headset on its first year. They know it's not going to make money. The big USPs for me, well, they'd probably be the eye hand tracking capabilities and the ability to use the headset as a Mac OS display. Oh, and that 120 degrees field of vision too. Whilst it'll all take some getting used to for sure, it does seem that Apple is hell bent on making this a high end, unique experience. Who knows? It could well go the way of iPad or Apple Watch. And apart from the hardcore enthusiasts, initial uptake may be slow, but what's the odds within five years? This thing is massive. As to when we'll finally get our hands on this headset, it's still not clear, but one thing I'm pretty certain about is that the planned spring event, oh, likely dates for that, by the way, are either the 21st or 22nd or 27th or 28th of March. It won't go ahead if Apple Vision 
isn't ready. Apple intends for that spring event to be all about, all about Apple Vision and the headset. But with all the information I've given you, I'm super keen to know what you make of it, what are you most looking forward to, and how do you think you'll end up using the Apple Vision headset? Get involved and leave some comments below. I promise, I promise I will try to reply to as many as possible. A lot rests on this Apple Vision headset in more ways than one. Guys, thanks for taking time to watch this video. Why not hang about and check out this video that YouTube thinks you might enjoy, or check out this playlist that I think you might like. Thanks again, I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you again very soon on the next video.